So welcome and good morning to service. Welcome to those who are here and enjoying the fellowship with each other and welcome to those who are viewing this service online. Welcome also to Bishop Rob Bartholomeus and his wife Jenny who are joining us in our praise and worship this morning. Welcome. So to, be to begin, I thought I'd remind us of the majesty of the great God we call Lord. It comes from Isaiah chapter 40. Do you not know, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Let's pray. Lord God and Heavenly Father, when we consider your majesty, we realise once again that you are so much greater than us, so much wiser than us, so much more powerful than we are. We can do nothing but stand in awe of your greatness and majesty and wonder again why you, the creator and the sustainer of the universe, should love us and send his son to die for us. We pray, Lord, that you will teach us to worship you in spirit and in truth and that you might find our worship worthy. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
as we confess our faith together through the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. He will come again with glory to judge the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who together with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets, and I believe one holy, Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. The epistle reading for today is taken from the book of Romans, reading from chapter 5, verses 1 to 5. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he the Spirit of Truth comes, He will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on His own. He will speak only what He hears, and He will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify Me because it is from Me that He will receive what He will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is Mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from Me what he will make known to you. Let's pray. Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our heart this morning be acceptable to you. And may our ears and our hearts and our minds be open and receptive to everything that you've prepared for us. In Jesus' name. Amen. I read somewhere that statistically, Trinity Sunday is the day most preachers prefer to have off. And I can understand that, as the Trinity is one of those really tricky things to try and explain. But it is an essential doctrine of the Christian faith. To deny the Trinity is to deny that faith. We worship one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And whilst there's lots of different examples that people have come up with over the years to try and explain the Trinity, they all fall short in some way or another and can even lead to heresy. 
the mystery of the Trinity is one we could spend weeks on, but since we've just celebrated Pentecost, I want to spend a little time thinking about the Holy Spirit. That also is a topic that we could spend weeks on, but I had an interesting revelation, I guess you might call it, about the role of the, the, and, and importance of the Holy Spirit um, during the week as I was preparing the message. As I was looking for pictures like that to give you an indication of what I was talking about, um, I stumbled upon a website that had really great graphics. But whenever I find anything on the internet, I always like to check it out a bit deeper to see who's put it together, what it's about, what their ethos is and theories and things are before I use it. And in doing that, I discovered that this, this was actually a site of slides being used um, to teach a class of Muslims how to refute the Trinity when they're speaking to Christians, which I found very interesting. As I looked at the presentation, it struck me how well this teacher not only knew his own religion, but clearly he had studied the Bible, he knew how to explain the Trinity, he was accurate, and then he pulled out a whole bunch of what he called proof texts that Christians use to justify the Trinity doctrine, he says. I spent a very interesting half hour reading through part of his presentation and I could see how an uninitiated person could possibly be swayed. It's a great reason why we as Christians really need to know our Bible well. But as I read through all of this and thought about it, I wondered, you know, here's this man studying the word of God in our Bible, but not seeing the truth that I could see. And I believe the reason for that is because he didn't have the Holy Spirit, whereas we do. In the reading from John today, we hear Jesus talk to his disciples of how the spirit of truth would come to them and guide them into all the truth. That he won't speak anything on his own, but only what he hears and will tell the, tell the disciples what's to come. It took me to two passages. The first from 1 Corinthians 2.14. The person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit. And Romans 8, 7, the mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law nor can it do so. So even though this man seemed to be very well versed in scriptures, he didn't have the essential thing that's needed, which is the Holy Spirit, only given to believers. It made it so clear to me how important the Spirit is for us. And I think sometimes we tend to overlook the significance of the Spirit and who he is. We focus a lot on the Father and the Son, and that's right and good. But it's important also to recognise the Spirit's role in our lives and, and his role in the Godhead. So I want to just brush over a few things about the Spirit this morning. Firstly, um, Jesus refers to the Spirit as he, which is natural, you might say. He is God's Spirit. He is God, the third member of the Holy Trinity. But some people view the Holy Spirit not as a he but as an it, more of a, a mystical force or an impersonal power that God makes available to believers. As I googled who is the Holy Spirit, 
just as many results came up for what is the Holy Spirit. Now, given some of the descriptions that we have of the Spirit in Scripture, maybe some people can get confused. Things like water, fire, wind, and even the dove. And we know, we're just having Pentecost, that we've, we've heard some of those descriptions. Pastor Noel Jew from, and Pastor Stone Olson have a great Bible study series on the Holy Spirit. And in the first session, Pastor Noel talks about the itness that people sometimes slip into when, you, when they're speaking about the Holy Spirit. And how that, um, due to the, the elemental kind of language that is used often, um, it can happen. I'll let him say a few words about it because I found this really good. But all of these images or metaphors that we've just been speaking about as fire, wind, water, river, rain, dove and so forth, they all describe the actions of the person of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is as much an intimate person as the Father and the Son is towards us. And that's important because when we talk about how questions and what questions, they tend towards an it relationship. How do I get it? What does it do? They tend to put the Holy Spirit in a box in which we are at the centre and the Holy Spirit is somehow doing something for us. The it language preserves our selfishness in a way. Can, can you see what I'm saying in that? But the who language of the Holy Spirit, when we're asking who the Holy Spirit is, not just what he does or how he works, but who he is, then that reverses things because it keeps us more focused away from ourselves as the centre of attention and more focused on what God is doing, Father, Son and Holy Spirit together. And that keeps us in a safer place because it keeps us properly ordered and properly in relation uh, to God as we ought to be. So, so it's important to understand that the who of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible shows us in many places that the Holy Spirit is God himself. We know this because the attributes that we read about of God are given to the Spirit, such as he is eternal, he is all-powerful, he is everywhere or omnipresent, he is all-knowing or omniscient, he's the creator. The Holy Spirit isn't an impersonal force that magically came along at Pentecost and caused the disciples to be able to speak in all sorts of languages and later on to heal people and do other miraculous things. He is the Spirit of truth who Jesus talks about in our passage today, who guides us into all truth and brings glory to Jesus. He's the helper and teacher God promises to send when he himself goes away, who teaches us all things and reminds us of everything that Jesus has said. He intercedes for us in our weakness and in those moments when we have no words of our own. He empowers us so we can share the gospel with boldness. He's the spirit of life, imparting newness of life, providing spiritual food that is the sustenance of the spiritual life. He comforts, reveals, guides, seals, gives gifts and convicts.
and through him, God's love has been poured out into our hearts as the Spirit is given to us. You may wonder at times, and I've spoken to people over the years who don't think they have the Holy Spirit, let alone any of the gifts. The Pentecostal movement says that you must have a separate baptism, a baptism in the Spirit. And often this is um, shown that you've received the Spirit by speaking in tongues. But as Anne shared with us last week, the disciples didn't have to do anything to receive the Holy Spirit at Pentecost except maybe wait until, as Jesus told them, to wait. He was promised to them. He is the wonderful provision from God that Anne shared with us last week. And as his believers, we're, we all have the Holy Spirit indwelling us. As we heard in the Romans reading before that God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. We need the Holy Spirit who leads us into all truth. The man whose page I read who was sharing information about the Trinity could not accept the truth. And we know why, because without the Holy Spirit, we can do nothing, not even believe. We need the Holy Spirit in our lives, and God has graciously given him to us. I watched a, a video of Pastor John Piper speaking about why we need the Holy Spirit, and I copied down what he said. We know from 1 Corinthians 12, 3 that no one can say Jesus is Lord except in the Holy Spirit. We know from 2 Thessalonians 2, 13 that all our efforts to pursue holiness will be hopeless because sanctification is by the Spirit. We know from John 3, 5 that it's the Holy Spirit that causes us to be born again. We know from Romans 8.13 that you must put to death the deeds of the body by the, the deeds of the body by the Spirit or perish. We know from Ephesians 1.17 that the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of wisdom. Without him, we will live lives of foolishness. And just look around at the world, the godless world that we live in, and you can see how true that is. We know in 1 Corinthians 12, 7 that to each believer is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. We know from Romans 8, 11 that if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his Spirit who dwells in you. He sums it up by saying, no spirit, no resurrection. No spirit, no new birth. No spirit, no confession of Jesus, of the Lordship of Jesus. No spirit, no victory over sin. No spirit, no pro progress in sanctification. No spirit, no spiritual wisdom. No spirit, no no spiritual gifts. God wants the very best for those who believe in him. And so he gave us his spirit because he knew that we couldn't do life on our own. And just as God loved the world so much and knew that we could do nothing to save ourselves, and so he sent Jesus to pay the price at Calvary for us. He also gives us his spirit to walk with us and empower us, giving us everything we need for godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own 
glory and goodness. As I thought about the man with the great graphics, with his study of scripture, it made me think of something else Pastor Jew says in his Holy study, Holy Spirit studies. And I'm paraphrasing here. Anything you know about the Spirit, you know from the scriptures. If we didn't have the scriptures, we wouldn't know about the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We wouldn't know about Jesus and God. The scriptures are where we learn and know about what we need to know as Christians. But the Father, the Son and Spirit are not entombed in the book. We meet them in the pages of the Bible, but they themselves come to us. Whether in your life you are walking on the mountaintops with everything going fine or if you're staggering through the deepest, darkest valleys you've ever faced, you are actually held in the embrace of the persons of the Trinity. God's spirit moves in us and so we are empowered to do all he calls us to do, to witness to the world about his grace and love and the amazing sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. It's God at work in us that gives us the strength to live our lives for him and serve him in the church. We don't need to rely on our own strength, but rather rely on his spirit. I'll finish with a story that I came across that I thought was quite good. The famous Boston pastor, Dr. A.J. Gordon, visited the World's Fair in Chicago. In the distance, he saw a man robed in bright, gaudy oriental clothes who appeared to be laboriously turning the crank of a pump and thereby making a mighty flow of water. Gordon was impressed with the man's energy, his smooth motions and his obvious physical condition. He was pumping a tremendous amount of water. Drawing closer, Gordon was surprised to discover that the man was actually made of wood. Instead of turning the crank and making the water flow, the flow of water was actually turning the crank and thereby making him go. This it is with those in the Lord's work. It isn't our efforts for him that achieve results. The flowing river of the Holy Spirit, channeled through our lives and lips, keeps us going and yields infinite results through our ministries. Let's pray. Loving Lord, we thank you that you have given us your spirit to teach and guide and instruct and empower us so that we can be your witnesses to a dying world. May we be more aware of your spirit working in our lives and in the world, breaking through to those whose eyes have been blinded to your wonderful truth so that they can know you. We know we have everything we need to make a difference. May the flowing river of the Holy Spirit channeled through our lives and our lips, keep us going so that we can yield wonderful things for you. We love and adore and honour you, our triune God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen.
Go into the day knowing your life has been touched by the triune God. You are cleansed by the mercy of God. You are surrounded by the love of Christ. You are filled with the power of the Spirit. Go in peace to love and serve our triune God. Amen.